Greetings, River Lady here, and I'm getting ready to plant my cardinal plant, but first I want to tell you a myth surrounding Lobelia cardinalis. It is said that when an old lady touches the roots of the cardinal flower, she'll find true love. Now, I don't know if it works, but I'm going to give it a try today. Okay, let's go. Before I get my cardinal flower in the ground, let me tell you a little bit about cardinal flowers. They are hardy in zones three through nine. However, in zones three through six, you do want to protect the roots with salt marsh hay or straw during the winter. They're herbaceous perennials, so all of this green foliage will die back, even down to the basil leaves. They like full sun, but in the warmer zones, like zone seven through nine, you want to protect them from the afternoon sun, dappled shade works best. They are native to North America and parts of Central America and parts of Canada. If they haven't been pushed out by purple loosestrife, you'll find them along marshes and streams and bogs. They love love getting their feet wet. So these are one plant that you don't have to worry about overwatering. Lobelia is a short-lived plant. The parent plant stays viable for about three years. So every two years or even the third year, if it comes back the third year, you want to split them and that helps to rejuvenate them. However, if you have a cardinal flower that you've planted, this happens to me a lot, they sometimes don't come back the second year and that can be due to the fact that you didn't water them enough. Every couple of days you want to give them a good thorough watering all around the plant, all around the zip, zo the zip zone, the drip zone, which is the area all around the plant and give it a good soaking. If you're getting rain, you can cut back to maybe one to two times a week. If you planted Lobelia and it didn't come back the second year, one of the reasons could be the watering. The other reason could be that it wasn't protected during the winter, if you're in the zones that I mentioned. So just make sure when the plant dies back, pack it around with salt marsh hay or straw. Feeding Lobelia is very easy. Repeat after me, compost, compost, compost. You give them compost when you plant them. You give them compost in the spring when they start to emerge. And you can give them compost, you don't have to but I like to, in the autumn before they go to sleep. You can look for blossoms on Lobelia from July through September, and the beauty of this plant is it's a hummingbird magnet. In fact, hummingbirds are the main pollinators for Lobelia. The flower spike can get up to about five feet in height, so you gotta stake it. And if you have a wimpy flower stalk, that means you're not getting enough sun. And they like the soil slightly acidic, so I am going to use my new, ta-da, pH moisture light meter. So we're going to put it on pH, and I'm going to go in. So let's see what the pH is. Let's come in tight. Definitely not acidic. Okay, so there are a few additives you can put in the soil to make it acidic. I like to use peat moss because it helps to retain moisture and that's a good thing for a plant like Cardinalis. So all I'm going to do is, I already sprinkled the peat moss in, and I'm just going to mix it around inside the hole. And then I'll backfill the soil and mix that as well. All right, so let's get her into the ground. One of the best ways to get a plant out of the pot is to just bang on the sides and then just gently lift. There we go. I'm going to come in tight so you can see I have the top of the plant sitting just slightly below the soil level and you can see that beautiful root network. Notice I'm not scraping at it to loosen the roots because that can actually damage the roots. I could soak this plant so for example I could take it 
and put it in water and let it sit there for about 10 minutes and that will loosen up the roots. So why don't I go ahead and do that? I'll be back in 10 minutes. Well, the camera person didn't realize that the battery on the camera had failed. So the portion of video that shows planting my cardinal flower is non-existent. But the process is pretty simple, and I've shown it in other videos. Take the plant out of the bucket of water, place it in the hole that you've prepared with the sphagnum moss and compost, backfill the dirt you took out of the hole to the halfway point, press down the dirt to remove any air pockets, then backfill the rest of the dirt. Press that down, and bingo! Easy cheesy. Okay, let's finish this video. And there we have it. The only pests you have to worry about with lobelia are slugs and snails. You can get fungus, but just when you water it, water from the base. And you can see that I put a little gully around it. So I'm just going to pour water in that gully. When first planting lobelia, you want to be mindful that you're giving it plenty of water. And as it's growing, you want to be mindful that it's getting plenty of water. But I've already gone over all of that. So I don't think there's anything else I need to tell you about lobelia for right now. Oh darn! I forgot to touch the roots! Oh, I guess I'm never going to find true love. Okay, anyway, this is River Lady saying I hope this encouraged you to get yourself a cardinal flower for your garden. They are hummingbird magnets. If you have any questions, post in the comments. And I thank you for watching. Happy gardening. Oh, and subscribe. Bye.